Okay, guys and girls, um, I'm sure girls also study mathematics, right? It's night time now, so I just decided to give us some night lessons. So it's uh, most appropriate for me to say good evening. But I know that there are people from maybe US, uh, Africa, Korea, Japan, Asia, um, Yugoslavia that's watching my, my video. So, you know, whatever time of the day is, um, greetings to all over the world. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because I really want to thank those people who have been watching my videos. And I really enjoy teaching mathematics. And I hope that you also, at the same rate, no pun intended, enjoy learning the subject from me. You know, it's really, uh, I really feel privileged and joyful that I can share the subject to anybody about around the world and anybody who has the uh, desire, the curiosity and patience to learn the subject. And you know, where we're going to learn right now, or what we're learning right now is for analysis, so let's just uh, continue our study. Alright, last video we were talking about the Fourier cosine series of a certain function. When we define a function f from minus l to l, even though it's from minus L to L and not the usual minus L to L, we are still able to get a Fourier series. It's just that it would be called the Fourier cosine series. Now, another way to call that is called the half range expansion. And there's another, the brother to that, the brother to the cosine, the Fourier cosine series would most logically be the Fourier sine series, is what we talk about now. And later, we'll just make a small comparison between the two. So, the objective is to find the Fourier sine series of a certain function f. Now, in this case, let f be integrable from minus l, from, sorry, 0 to l. Okay, notice the difference that it's not minus l to l. So, in a way, all the definitions that we learned from the past about the Fourier series doesn't really apply because the, the endpoints are different, okay, which they are. But it's okay, it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is that we're going to use the property of certain functions. Cosine series, we use the, the even property. So, this time, we're going to use the odd property. We will extend f to an odd function, which in this case we just call w, and w will be defined from minus l to l. Basically, that is what we're doing, and if you were to look at the, the definition of w, you would understand what, what's happening. Uh, wx is equal to the function f of x if x is between 0 to l, well, that is normal because that's what we started out with, and wx is equal to the minus of the function of minus x when x is from minus l to 0. If I were to illustrate that on a graph, what we're actually doing is that we are rotating the function f of x about the origin. And when we do that, we'll get something like this. And I hope you can see that. Um, so it's, really, um, it's not symmetrical. Well, I don't know what you call it, but it's actually just rotating the graph around the origin, something like that. And actually, this one would be also um, minus l. Okay? Yeah. So I hope you can see that. Minor, minus sign is a bit... Uh, right. Minus sign there. This is our wx. So, um, be a, a bit, I would like to tell you that wx is actually both this graph and this graph over here. Function f of x is just this one over there. Let's just be clear. Now, why do you see all these minus signs over here? Uh, minus function f of minus x. Well, basically, that is to illustrate the property of an odd function. Uh, if I were to quickly recall, an odd function is defined as this. Minus um, f of x equals to function applied to minus x. So, if we were to define this one as in the odd function as w, we'll just change this to w and that is what we get, bring the negative sign over. So, that is what basically it is. w is now an odd function of the function um, f. So, if we know that w is an odd function, we can already um, apply the Fourier coefficients. Why? Because w is already defined from minus l to l. That is good. But what do we know about the uh, odd functions or when we apply the Fourier coefficients to the odd functions? Well, basically, a naught, well, this is going to be equal to zero. Why? We are going to integrate from the, the same limits, or shall I say, um, from the origin, which is the same distance away from the origin, so minus L to L. If I were to illustrate on a graph, roots of calculus shows us very, that very easily. What happens if we integrate by getting the area, correct? So this area is a negative area, but it's exactly the same as this area over here. So if this area is negative because it's uh, below the x-axis, and it's the same as this. Well, if we were to add them up, we just basically cancel out each other. So um, it's equal to zero right, right there. Because now we're going to use some algebra to tell us that as we multiply an odd function with an even function, we will get an odd function. So again, integrate minus L to L of an odd function gives us zero. So that is neat, you know, because a a naught and a n gets uh, immediately gets eliminated. Throw them out the door. We don't need them. Let's concentrate on b n right now. And as you will know. Um, the Fourier series will be written just as the sine function because a0 and an disappear, so we got bn, and what well, is bn? bn is actually this thing over here. Well, it actually started out with 1 divided by l integrate minus l to l. Okay? But we know that the wx multiplied by sine n pi x divided by l is going to be an even function. So, you know, just for, you know, to type, uh, neaten up the algebra, if it's an even function, all I have to do is that I can just integrate from 0 to l and then multiply by a 2, multiply by a 2 like that. 
which is essentially what I have over here. So, what does it tell us? Well, that tells us that we can now write the Fourier series of um, Wx. Okay, and Wx is an is a odd function. So, the Fourier series on minus L to L contains only sine terms. Well, okay, I explained that. That is this thing over here, where Bn is um, this thing right there. Now, um, how do I get from Wx to f of x? Because remember, we started out with f of, f of x. Well, that is actually quite simple to understand. Why is that? Well, okay, look, Bn is equal to 2 divided by L integrate minus L to L of the Wx function. But remember, what is Wx function if we are integrating from, minus, from 0 to L? If we are integrating from 0 to L, all we need to do is to obey the definition over here, which is what we have there, um, x is between 0 to L. So I can um, judicially just simply change this to the function f of x, because the limits allow me to. See, I'm integrating from 0 to L. Can I integrate from you know, maybe minus L? Things may not turn out that neat, but I'm integrating from 0 to L, so I can you know, immediately substitute the function f of x. Okay, and the next thing is that I can also write the Fourier series okay, um, as this thing over here, but when I change it to the f of x, I need to change the, the, the boundaries uh, appropriately, which again is very easy to do. So I would immediately write, if I were to erase this, the Fourier sine series of f of x, but this time on 0 to L is given by this thing over here. Okay? Now, why can I do that? Well, because you see, now, I, I don't know what the um, wx, um, wx and this thing over here actually gives us. Or, yeah, I don't know what wx this thing over here gives us. But what I do know is that the Fourier series that we had before, right, was from minus L to L. All I'm doing is I'm just taking that same series, but just taking the limits as from 0 to L. So in a way, I'm like reducing the domain, and if as long as I reduce the domain, things should turn out all right. Because as long, you know, in this domain that I've reduced it to, w, Wx does equal the function f of x. So, you know, this is perfectly fine. The Fourier series of f of x on my uh, 0 to L is given by this thing over here. Now, honestly, you don't need much explanation to do that, but, you know, I just want to, you know, give my two cents worth. So let's just look at a typical example. We will expand this in the Fourier sign series on 0 to 1. So, you know, let's just be very conscious. It's 0 to 1. So we will need the Fourier sign series, the half range expansion, because we are considering only a on one half. So um, let's just we use the, apply the formula, 2 divided by 1, because it's from 0 to 1, um, e to the 2x, uh, the sine function, okay, which gives us this thing over here, then later the Fourier sine series would be bn, substitute inside this, and don't forget to multiply by a sine 2 pi x, and you know, the summation of that from 1 to infinity, as easy as that. Right, so this is how to get the Fourier sine series of a certain function that's defined from 0 to l. Now next up is the convergence for x, in 0 to L and assume left, okay, I will just abbreviate the thing. So basically it's telling us um, the left hand derivative and uh, the right hand derivative, okay, exists for your sign series converges to the same thing, half approach x from the, the limit of x from the negative side plus the limit of x from the positive side and you know you divide that by 2. So at points where x is between 0 to l, okay, it's against a strict inequality. If you were to really rewrite that, it's going to be this one to here. What you notice for all these Fourier series is that really when we apply the convergence theorem, the endpoints are always something special. Something special always happens at the endpoints, I don't know why. But it's within the, the limits, you know, things you know, always happen to converge to the average as we approach that point from the left hand side and from the right hand side, or we take the limits as we approach it from the left hand side and the right hand side. Now obviously you can see that if f, is, if f of x is continuous from 0 to l, this just basically gives us f of x. Okay. So you see, it's, we always must pay careful attention to the endpoints, which in this case is 0 to l, such as I have over here. The Fourier, the Fourier sign series converges to 0 at both um, x equals 0 and x equals l. Now why is that so? Well, let's just look, go back to our previous example, which is expanding e to the 2x, uh, the Fourier sign series of um, e to the 2x. Notice that we have this thing over here. And notice the sine function. What does the sine function tell us? Well, if we were to substitute x inside, okay, and just assume that we can write this for the minute, 
Okay, for the moment, if we were to substitute um, zero inside here, it goes into here, okay, and sine of zero is also equals to zero. So basically, all these terms disappear because they are all multiplied by zero. And if we were to substitute L inside, okay, we would also get, okay, yeah, one. L is 1 in this case. If we were to substitute 1 inside, sine n pi is also equal to 0 regardless of whatever multiple of n or whatever um, integer value of n. So that is what it tells us because of the sine function or because of this big identity, or it's not really big, but this common identity like this. Okay? Um, we substitute 0, sine 0 is equal to 0. We substitute L inside, well, this is what we're going to get because it's going to be divided by L. This is what we get is equal to 0. So, you know, this is what it means. The Fourier sine series converges to zero at both x equals to zero and x equals to L.